Hello, it's Connie from Faf Designs. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm a furnished painter. I'm also a brand ambassador for Dixie Bell Paint. Every week I'll bring you a furnished painting video and this one, we're not actually gonna paint in it. We are gonna talk prep, dreaded prep. So the reason for this video is because um, it's something that has caught me out in the past and it's also something that I get asked quite a lot. So I'm specifically talking about pine. And pine furniture makes really, really good starting point for pieces to upcycle because it's normally quite inexpensive but very solid and it paints really well. There are a couple of things that I do differently with pine versus other types of wood and I will talk about that in the video and hopefully it'll be useful for people that are going to upcycle pine pieces of furniture. Don't know why my voice went so high at the end. Pine pieces of furniture. First things first, as always, I give my piece a good clean. Now the only exception to that is if your piece is waxed, which quite often pine is. If you do have a wax piece of furniture, then there is a step that you need to take before cleaning and I will put a link to a video top right I'll put a video to, at the top that you can click on that will take you to a video which shows how to strip wax off a piece of furniture. Ideally you want to strip that wax off your piece of furniture before you paint it. Generally speaking paint doesn't like going over the top of wax and you probably will have issues with your paint adhering to the surface if you don't strip the wax. However this piece isn't waxed which I'm super grateful about. For that reason, I'm just gonna go straight in with cleaning. I have got some pre-mixed cleaner in this Waitrose spray bottle because I'm posh. Um, so it's just an old spray bottle that has some surface cleaner in and I have used a mixture of Dixie Bell's White Lightning Cleaner with water. So you can have a pre-mixed solution of that if you want to. For larger pieces I use a bucket with warm water but this is really good for just kind of smaller pieces that you just want to spray on. Um, it's a little bit more convenient, that's all. So all you're going to do is spray this liberally all over the piece. Don't forget, top, bottom, the back, inside cupboards, inside drawers. This has got two stones and a spider in it, which is nice. So spray all over a damp or dry microfiber cloth. I buy these in bulk off Amazon. I'll link all the products below that I use. These are absolutely fabulous. I use them a lot. I use them for cleaning. I use them for buffing wax. I use them all the time so and the best thing is you can just chuck them in the washing machine and reuse them whichever cleaner you choose to use just make sure that it is a degreasing cleaner because that's going to remove all of the grime off the surface of your piece so you can see from the state of that it's cleaning off all of the dust grime dirt and everything else once you have completely scrubbed your piece of furniture then you are going to want to rinse that off completely you don't want any cleaning product left on the surface of this again it could affect how the paint adheres to your piece okay so that's nice and dry clean dry Excuse if you can hear any background noise, my neighbours have decided to get the mower out. Next thing to do is to give your piece a scuff sand. I always scuff sand my pieces, some people don't, some people do. Um, I always like to do it just because I am then 100% confident that the paint is going to grip to that surface. You don't need to sand back to the bare wood, you just need to make a little bit of a scuff on the surface, hence scuff sand. Um, you can also call it giving it a key, you can use sandpaper, a sanding pad, your electric sander, I always use this because it's got a hose attachment to it and it sucks all the dust away so there's no dust flying around in the air and I can sand inside and it doesn't make a mess. If you want to see the video on, a very non-technical video on this sander, I will put it in top right hand corner. Um, it just gives you a bit of detail about the sander because I always get asked about it. So I'm going to use my electric sander for the majority of the flat surfaces and then I'll go in with this and just use that in the kind of smaller nooks and crannies. So all you need to do when you scuff sand is just lightly 
scuff the surface of the piece and this is just going to break the seal on the existing finish and give your paint a little bit of grip to basically adhere to your furniture. So that's had a quick scuff sand. It was relatively quick, I know I sped parts up, um, but prep doesn't have to be painful. Um, it doesn't have to take, you know, days and days. It can just be really quick. So the next thing to do is to give your piece a wipe down. So obviously we've sanded this, run my hand over it and I've got dust on my hand. If you went straight over the top of that with your paint or your primer, you're going to get dust in it. So grab a dry or damp clean microfiber cloth and just give it a once over. There you go. Lovely bit of, bit of dust, orangey dust off the surface there. Okay, so you remember me saying that I prep pine in a slightly different way. So far, it's been exactly the same as any other piece of furniture that I would prep. The difference is this teeny little bottle here. So this is knotting solution. And you remember me saying that pine has knots in it and knots are notorious for bleeding through paint. So bleed through is just something basically that happens when the tannins in the in the wood uh, leak through and discolour your paint. You can get it on all different colours of paint, even black, but it's more noticeable and more obvious on pale colours and neutrals. I don't know what I'm yet doing with this cabinet. I have no plans for it. Well, actually, I've got a lot of plans for it, but I just need to pick one. Um, so for that reason, I'm going to prep it and decide at a later date. <laughs> so this product is what I'm going to apply next, only over the knot. So this is not a primer or anything. It is just a very specific product for treating the knots in wood. Now the front of this cabinet doesn't actually have too many knots in it. I'm going to treat them. I'm going to give you a little zoomed in close look. Um, and like I say, it's in a very, very small tub because you only need to apply it over the areas that have got knots you don't need to apply it all over i'll link it below i just grabbed mine off amazon um it's a very specific product that's why obviously it's you know in such a small tub because you only need to treat the knot not anything else not not you get a little brush in the lid a little bit like a nail polish applicator and you I always do two coats um, so wait about 15 minutes for this to dry the first coat apply another one and then wait a couple of hours before applying your primer so you can just see that knot on the front of the door there um, this pine cabinet actually doesn't have that many knots um, different types of pine and different ages of pine and different quality of pine can dictate how many knots there are in a piece and I just paint the product on it's got a brown tinge to it it's not clear it's sort of a brownie liquid and basically that is it So that's all the knots treated with this stuff. It's super quick, super easy. And I'm gonna go and make a cup of tea, wait for them to dry, and then apply a second coat over the knots. Okay, so we have treated those knots with the knotting solution. That's the word I was looking for. The next thing I'm gonna do is prime. So Dixie Bell has a water-based stain blocking primer called Boss, it's available in three colors. You can get it in clear, in white, and in gray. Because I don't know what I'm gonna do with this cabinet, it's definitely gonna be painted, I'm gonna use gray. Gray is the best in terms of versatility, so you can go over the top of this with light colors, and you can also go over the top of this with dark color paint. So I'm gonna go gray, I'm gonna choose a safe option. And this is another one of those products that you kinda need to stick to the rules. So you need to do a coat of this, leave it for a couple of hours to dry, a second coat of this, leave it for 24 hours. So that 24 hours is gonna make sure that this is dried and started to cure, and it's gonna lock that bleed through away. The drying time is particularly important with a product like this because it's water-based, so you do need to leave it to dry for just caught sight of my trotter in the background you do need to leave it to dry for the proper amount of time 
so that it can basically just do its job. So I'm going to apply that all over now. I'm using one of Dixie Bell's synthetic brushes to apply the primer to get a smooth finish and it really is an easy product to apply. Like I say, it's water-based, it's super easy to clean up and there's no nasty odours with it. Okie dokie, so I left this to dry overnight just because I didn't have time last night to do a second coat. So it's had one coat, the good thing is there's no sign of bleed through and the knots, there's no sign of bleed through on the knots either, so good sign so far. If you want to sand in between coats of the primer, you can do if you're going for a super smooth look, then you can just use a really fine sanding sponge and just sand in between and that's going to help you get a really smooth finish. And again, not forgetting a quick wipe down with a dry microfiber cloth just to grab any bits of dust on the surface. And then straight in with the second coat of Boss, which I'm applying in exactly the same way as the first with a synthetic brush for a smooth finish. And I'll only need two coats of Boss on this piece. There was no apparent bleed through on the first coat so that I know that it's gonna be absolutely fine with two coats. Some pieces of furniture may need an additional coat, but it really does depend on the piece. Okay, so this has had two coats of Boss all over it. That is our prep done. We've just got to leave this 24 hours before we do the next step. And I'm actually going to split this video into several different sections. So this has been step one. This has been the prep. This is how you prep prime prep 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 prep. This is how you prep pine furniture. And then we'll do another of the painting side of things. So I'll just split it up so it's a little bit more shorter shorter video for you instead of dragging it out into one long one so i hope that was helpful i hope that helped with any prep information as always if you have any questions drop them in the comments below and i'll answer them and make sure you're subscribed to my channel ring the notification bell for the next installation of this pine cabinet